This is our new project. It's a 99 Easy Go TXT, full electric. I got to do a 12 volt battery conversion where you just take three 12 volt batteries and make it a 36 volt setup. Now I'm going to make it solar powered. It's probably going to be a multi part series. Let's go ahead and get in the shop and get this thing going. All right, now that we got it in the shop, plan on getting the battery situation figured out, getting all my cables hooked up how they should be. The temporary job I have going on. Now I want to get the solar, uh, the solar charger installed in here. I hadn't decided if I'm going to try to mount a panel on top of this yet, temporarily. We'll see. I'll make it up as I go. For the battery cables, I'm just going to use some old welding uh, wire I had for the stick welder. I'm going to take these little clips I bought off of Amazon from a past project. I'm just going to lay them up here to it. And I already got my length too. I already know. I'll show you more about that later. But I just lay them up to the side of it. I get my copper wire right to the edge. I might go a little more. And then I'll just mark right there where I need to cut it. And I'll take my knife and scan around it. Bender off. There you go. Copper ready to go right into this. You want to make sure you try to get all your strands in there. And just give it a little twist. And really pack her in. Whenever you're crimping these, you want to make sure your copper is pushed up tight. And make sure all them little threads are in there. You also want to make sure the cable's flat. You'll have both of them on there because it's going to hook up to a negative of one battery and to the positive of the next. And you want you don't want your wire to be all kind of twisted up. You want to make sure they're parallel one another there. Now that you got your cable stripped down and you got your pieces on, this is the way you do it when you don't have the right tools but it still gets the job done i'll take my bolt cutters and i'll just get the wire get the connector there in it and i'll start bringing it down and crimping it just kind of squeeze it as hard as you can without cutting through it i mean it crimps it down on there tight if you don't have bolt cutters, you can just get a punch and you can lay it on concrete, on your vise, whatever you have. You just hold your punch up here and you smack it with a hammer. Or you smack it with a hammer a few times first and then you can take a punch and really drive it in there and it'll, it'll set up tight. And you can just take this one. You don't really want to get too close to the edge either. Good pull. Oh, that's her. You ain't really got to worry about it coming off of there, is I mean, it's tight. I could have done a little better on that one. I just want my heat shrink to go right up to the edge here. I don't want it to get in the way of where my terminal is going to be hooking up and all. And then we just want to take the torch and shrink her up. You really don't want to heat up on one spot too long. If 
you just burn the heat shrink. You want to heat everything gradually. You want to watch for the coal looking stuff coming out. And that really makes it seal. Then just like that, you have two brand new looking cables. So what I've done here is I took three 12 volt batteries and I run them in series. So I took my negative of the first battery, run it to the positive of the second, negative of the second to the positive of the third. And then this terminal and this one here, when you put a voltmeter on it, it'll read 36 volts, which is what this golf cart runs off of. I'm pretty sure originally it just had six 12 volt, uh, not 12 volt, six, six volt batteries. And when you wire them all in series like this, it would equal up to 36. But for now, I'm just putting three in here. And I'm thinking about adding three more 12 volt batteries later on so I have like a bigger battery bank and I can ride longer. If you're wanting to do the same thing to your golf cart, this is a 20, the part number for this is 24 DC. So for now, I have this temporary cable of a one alt run over here and it's tied into this one. This one wasn't long enough to reach to the negative side since I converted all of this. Originally your battery bank was circled back around and your negative and your positive will have been on the same end here. So for now I'm just gonna take this wire off and I'm gonna make a longer one where I can just directly tie it to the negative end. I got my welding, my extra welding lead wire I had left. I'm just gonna route it around from the negative side here where all these other factory wires are. And it's gonna run up into this box. I gotta take this B negative loose. I'm just gonna make new uh, fittings for it, for it to tie in. And uh, not sure if it matters or not, but I am just gonna use this one off cable. This, uh, what I'm replacing it. What's here originally is a lot smaller. It's like, four gauge maybe. I don't know if that'll matter, but I don't see why it would. I'm going with a bigger wire instead of a smaller wire. Make sure before you work on any of this, you take off your positive and have it away. Really, I should take that one off too. And do not touch any other terminals as you do this. should work. I believe this one would be perfect. All right, so now I got my new one alt cable run to the battery negative and it just runs on across all the way to the negative side. And then I went ahead and remade a bigger positive. It's a lot shorter. But it'll just connect up right here and then it runs to the positive side of the cylinder. I didn't replace the, what goes from the solenoid to the main terminal there, but I think it'll be okay. If not, I, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it as I run it. And if it ends up getting hotter and all the rest, then I'll just end up replacing it like this. And I'm sure in the comments, someone will let me know if this was a bad idea or not. I'll be waiting for it. All right, well, I got her all hooked back up. Now we're testing her. And I believe she's working. So we're about to go take her on a test drive. And then we're going to wash it. And then I'll install all the 
the solar charger and all. All right, be right back. Okay. Okay, this is the first real test drive. Definitely feels like it has a lot more power in the bottom end. Let's see what our speed is. Good enough for me to say this was a good test drive. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get this thing cleaned up. this thing looks so much different than when I started. I ain't even put no cleaner on it. This is definitely one of them things I should have took a before and after picture of. That's staying there. Alright, I lied. I messed a little bit. Now let's get the floorboard all dirty. Let's roll. Oh. We're going to cancel that order then. Alright, so now to get and install on this solar charger. You got your terminals to hook up your positive and negative of the solar panel and your positive and negative of the battery. And then this is your load side. I'm not going to be using this. I'm just going to go ahead and mount this to the cart and in whatever place I think is going to be the best. And I'm going to hook it up to the batteries and I'm going to get ready to hook up the solar panel on the roof. Maybe. So let's get to it. So we installed the solar charge controller. And this black and red is the positive and negative that runs to the batteries. I just have it where they run over, connects to the positive of the first battery and the negative of the third battery. Now we end up just zip tying them up in our green and white, which connects to the positive and the negative of the solar panels. I just left me some slack in there. And I run them up the side of the cart here. And I have my little pigtails left up here. To where I can, whenever I get ready to put the solar panels on top, I can just directly tie them in there. But we ain't gonna get to that in this video. That'll have to be for part two. Because I only have one solar panel. That's gonna be it for this video. There's a lot more modifications I want to do, and I still have to get the other two panels or three panels, depending on what I decide to go with. Two panels will be about the same size as the roof that's on here now. If I make three, it'll extend out towards the back of the cart here, and it'll be all right if I end up putting a 
truck bed like I plan on doing. I'm just going to fabricate one up and mount it to it. And when I put the panels on, I'm going to end up remaking the rails that hold the top on. I'm just going to do away with all of it and make a new piece that holds the panels and it'll be the new roof for the car. So uh, I'll catch y'all next time in the next video. Thanks for watching.